Hi, this is Gangster Granny by David Walliams. Chapter 2. A Duck Quacking Before long, Granny and Grandson were sitting opposite each other in deadly silence at the dining room table, just like every single Friday night. When his parents weren't watching Strictly on TV, they were eating curry or going to the movies. Friday night was their date night, and ever since Ben could remember, they had been dropping him off with his granny when they went out. If they weren't going to see Strictly stars dancing live on stage, they would normally go to the Taj Mahal, the curry house on the high street, not the ancient white marble monument in India, and eat their own body weight in popper doms. All that could be heard in the bungalow was the ticking of the carriage clock on the mantelpiece, the clinking of metal spoons against porcelain bowls, and the occasional high-pitched whistle of Granny's faulty hearing aid. It was a device whose purpose seemed to be not so much to aid Granny's deafness, but to cause deafness in others. It was one of the main things that Ben hated about his Granny. The others were, one, Granny would always spit in the used tissue she kept up her sleeve of her cardigan and wipe her grandson's face with it. Two, her TV had been broken since 1992, and now it was covered in dust so thick it was like fur. Three, her house was stuffed full of books that she always tried to get Ben to read, even though he loathed reading. Four, Granny insisted you wore a heavy winter coat all year round, even on a boiling hot day, otherwise she wouldn't feel the benefit. Five, she reeked of cabbage. Anyone with a cabbage allergy would not be able to come within 10 miles of her. Six, Granny's idea of an exciting day out was feeding mouldy crusts of bread to some ducks in a pond. Seven, she constantly blew off even without acknowledging it. Eight, those blow-offs didn't just smell of cabbage, they smelled of rotten cabbage. Nine, Granny made you go to bed so early it seemed hardly worthwhile getting up in the first place. Ten, she knitted her only grandson jumpers for Christmas with puppies or kittens on them, which she was forced to wear during the whole festive period by his parents. How's your soup? inquired the old lady. Ben had been stirring the pale green liquid around the chip bowl for the last ten minutes, hoping it would somehow disappear. It wouldn't. And now it was getting cold. Cold bits of cabbage floating around in some cold, cabbagey water. Uh, it's delicious, thank you, replied Ben. Good. Good, said the old lady again. Clink, clink. Good. Granny seemed to find it as hard to speak to Ben as he did to her. Clink, clank, whistle. How school? she asked. Boring, muttered Ben. Adults always asked kids how they were doing at school the one subject kids absolutely hated talking about. You don't even want to talk about school when you're at school. Ah, said Granny. Tick, tock, clink, clank, whistle, tick, tock. Well, I must go check on the oven, said Granny, after a long pause stretched into an even longer pause. I've got your favourite cabbage pie on the go. She rose slowly from her seat and made her way to the kitchen. As she took each step, a little bubble of wind puffed out of her saggy bottom. It sounded like a duck quacking. Either she didn't realise or was extremely good at pretending she didn't realise. Ben watched her go and then crept silently across the room. This was difficult because of all the piles of books everywhere. Ben's granny loved books and always seemed to have her nose in one. They were stacked on shelves, lined on window sills, piled up on corners. Crime novels were her favourite books about gangsters, bank robbers and mafia and the like. Ben wasn't sure what the difference between gangster and gangster was, but a gangster seemed much worse. Although Ben hated reading, he loved looking at the covers of Granny's books. They had fast cars and guns and glamorous ladies luridly painted on them, and Ben found it hard to believe this boring old Granny of his liked reading stories that looked so thrilling. Why is she obsessed with gangsters, thought Ben. Gangsters don't live in bungalows. Gangsters don't play Scrabble. Gangsters probably don't smell of cabbage. Ben was a very slow reader, and the teachers at school made him feel stupid because he couldn't keep up. The headmistress had even put him down a year in the hope that he would catch up on his reading. As a result, all his friends were in different class, and he, nearly, he felt nearly as alone at school as he did at home. 
with his parents who only cared about ballroom dancing. Eventually, after a hairy moment where he nearly knocked over a stack of real life crime books, Ben made it to the pot plant in the corner. He quickly tipped the remainder of the soup into it. The plant looked as though it was already dying, and if it wasn't dead yet, Danny's co Granny's cold cabbage soup was sure to kill it off. Suddenly, Ben heard Granny's bum squeaking again as she made her way to the dining room, so he sped back to the table. He sat there trying to look as innocent as possible, with his empty bowl in front of him and his spoon in his hand. I finished my soup, thank you Granny, it was yummy. That's good, said the old lady as she trundled back to the table carrying a saucepan on a tray. I've got plenty more here for you, boy. Smiling, she served him up another bowl. Ben gulped in terror. <laughs>